Hey everybody, Eve here. Today we're going to be discussing things you can't live without in your tiny space. And these will be what are I consider to be essential, non-negotiable, not something we can, you know what, it looks like something's on fire here. Seriously. Oh, I'm burning an incense, so, you know, on the table because I do that. I like, I'm very 70s, very hippie. So the smoke you're seeing is, no, it's, it's not for special effects because I think this is some sort of production. No, no, nothing like that. It just happens to be I'm burning incense and it's wafting through my dwelling and it smells nice. So at first I thought, huh, I'm on fire. No, much ado about nothing. Let's move forward because as you know, what is it, consistent with all my videos are my bloopers. And because I'm raw and uncut and I have many faces, I roll with it. And um, yeah, I'll get into editing in the future, but right now I do have a life outside of the YouTube world. And uh, I'm trying to contribute and help and by giving back and sharing knowledge from experience of living tiny. So this is why I'm sharing. So these are the things you can't live without. These are non-negotiable. It, it's If you're going to live tiny, you're gonna live in a mobile home, whether it's a type of RV, a camper, a, a van, your car. Um, I'm trying to think of other dwellings, a tiny house, anything on wheels, anything that's mobile, or even if it's not on wheels, just a tiny space in general. Non-negotiable items you cannot live without. And the first one is going to be water. The second one is you're going well actually I'm going to I'm going to back up a minute. The most important thing that you cannot live without is going to be a stable solid vehicle. Whether it's a tiny house, a camper, uh, a converted horse trailer, a van, a car, uh, anything that's on wheels or not on wheels. If it's not solid a, some form of solid structure to protect you from wind and the elements, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And it's going to have to be, and if it isn't when you buy it, it's going to have to be by the time you dwell, dwell in it at some point, insulated also from the elements. So that if you decide, to, when you decide to heat it, it retains the heat. If you decide to cool it, it remains cool. Otherwise, you're going to spend tons of money trying to heat and cool a structure that, like I said, you know, I live in a 14 foot, which is an 80 square feet converted horse trailer, which is made of steel. I live in one of the older horse trailers, which I love. It's not aluminum. It's, it's a steel structure because it's, it's one of the older ones. And uh, is it insulated? Hmm. That's debatable. It depends. Uh, yeah, if you're under a carport or under uh, in the middle of a woods, it, let's say you're living in a predominantly warm area of the country, uh, and as long as you've got a certain amount of shade and some kind of structure over you, yeah, it's it's it's, it's it'll be insulated by nature. But is it was it insulated when I got it? No. Nope. Not at all. So this thing is like being in a an ice cube tray in the winter, and it's like being in a toaster <laughs> in the summer. So no, it's not. It wasn't properly insulated. Now I'm working on that, and and it also had a lot of leaks. Yeah, even though I love the guy who created my personal space, tiny space structure. Love him, love him. It looks beautiful. It's very solid, very well constructed. Yes, it, it, it had its uh, shortcomings, and that is is that he loves to create these magical places that you can dwell in. However, he doesn't spend a whole lot of time doing his research on how to properly insulate, 
like my doors aren't very well sealed. The windows were older and not beautifully sealed. Nothing sealed. Nothing sealed or really insulated. And, you know, it's a, besides being my personal dwelling, it's also a habitation for spiders and ants and mice. And yeah, because it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of openings in it. And it's not well insulated. But like I said, I'm working on that. I'm working on that, you know, do your research before you buy whatever it is, because from what I've observed on YouTube, a lot of RV people and other people that's purchased vans, you know, they're all having similar problems. This is, a, this is all a trial by fire journey, people, where it, it, tiny spaces haven't been around a long time. Well, heck, the housing industry, you, you, we all know houses aren't perfect either. Look at the leaking basements, the mold, the mildew issues i mean the same thing with a house dwelling you know i i it's it's we're we're creatures we're creatures that learn by trial and usually that trial is by fire so yeah it's a, so we're, we're gonna say number one because i just love to digress and go off and without my little cheat sheets i keep now you know me i'll ramble forever and we you know that's not a pretty thing so the other things you cannot live without everything being beneath the most important which is the is a is a very solid structure okay is water okay uh, whether you capture rainwater whatever potable water method you use I think the most important one is its purity. Now you, other people may feel safe and feel like it's okay to use water to wash your dishes in or wash your body in a less than pure form of water. I don't embrace that thought or notion at all. I mean, our skin is one of the largest organs on our body and we know it absorbs things. I mean, take a bath and, you know, you, you, you do. You, you absorb a lot of, uh, and, and chemicals. That's why they'll say, don't get this chemical. You know, or if you get this chemical on your skin, bathe immediately, flush immediately, jump into, if you're close to Niagara Falls, jump in that thing immediately. Yeah, get that chemical off of you because, yeah, it's going to permeate or penetrate into your largest organ which does absorb, it does absorb things. Put some perfume on, you know, come on. You put, if people put enough perfume on, you can taste it. Rub, I've heard about people rubbing garlic on the soles of your feet. Uh, yeah, why would you do that? I mean, well, if you wanna drive off everybody you don't like, that'll work. Uh, whether it's, well, health benefits, that probably does. Probably does, I ain't doing it because, I don't know. I mean, I live in a tiny space. I don't want to smell garlic 24-7. So, yeah, I might go to a friend's house or go to a retreat, and if they say, oh, yeah, it's a garlic sauna. Rub garlic everywhere all over your body so you can reverse toxin or expel toxins and reverse disease. Sure, count me in. But am I going to do it in this tiny space? No. No. Not anytime soon, and no. So, then you need, so water, pure water. Don't care what methods you use, event, you know, if you're capturing it in a, some kind of a barrel, uh, rainwater outside, you make sure that before it goes into your body, onto your body, you wash the dishes, it doesn't matter what method, you use some other type of way to filter or purify it, and the closest you can get to dis distilled water, pure, I don't, you know, triple osmosis, I don't care what you call it uh, you know doesn't matter just get it pure get it pure because personally if if i can't if it isn't safe 100 percent safe to drink i'm not putting it anywhere on my body i'm not even putting it on my dishes why would i watch it because my hands have to do the dishes and i don't want to wear gloves and that's another thing why i have all, gloves and all these other things in your tiny space that you really don't need if you have pure water and, you, and you're you surround yourself with non-toxic substances you're really going to have, you know, minimize the use of gloves unless you want to use them when you're cleaning your luggable loo. By the way, in one of my last videos, I kept calling my potty system 
the portaloo. You gotta forgive me, people. I've been doing research. Uh, I well, I lost just lost my husband within the past year, so you know my mind is not a, a, a thing of beauty anymore. It's just really not. In fact, it's kind of a messy, cobwebby, scary little place from time to time. So, so I called it a portaloo, a portable, a portable loo toilet is a reasonable, reasonable mistake. Uh, some people call it, uh, it's actually called the luggable loo. I found out that the system that I initially based my system off of is called the luggable loo because it's a loo you can lug around with you, whether it's in a van, whether it's in a car, whether it's in an RV, whether it doesn't matter. Take that sucker, you know, put it in your knapsack if you've got one big enough. It, who cares? It's, it's portable. It's a, and that's why I called it the port loo So sorry for all you purists out there. It's like, oh, that's not called a port loo You're stupid. You're stupid. It's a luggable loo Okay, forgive me. Forgive me at the altar of everything that is holy for having made that little error. Sorry, it's the way it is. So, water. Then, food gonna have to eat okay so you're gonna need in my opinion you're gonna need some way to hold some sort of nourishment to sustain your body now what type of nourishment that's gonna be on you I'm a vegetarian I love living foods I like whole foods the closest to nature the better I do know a lot of people on YouTube that like fast food um, whatever whatever floats your boat use whatever method but whether you use one of those yeti coolers that will keep if you're boondocking now boondocking is where people go out on blm land or any other type of land where they do not have a physical electric connection that enables them to get heat and air they they may have or may not have either a generator system or a solar system and, and solar systems, from what I hear, unless somebody's really, really, really genius, cannot run an air conditioner, and in most cases, some heaters, with solar. Solar will be to ch charge the, your battery on your vehicle enough so that you can have a cell phone, you know, charge your cell phone and charge your laptop and things like that. So you, when you're boondocking and what have you, people can't always run their coolers or their fridges especially if they're a van dweller but it, this can also apply to certain rvs or like say if i decided to take this rig that i'm in that weighs about it's over three thousand pounds maybe closer to four thousand pounds and i pull this to some national park somewhere well right now everything i have in here is you know electric and and you can't plug in. There's no place to plug in out there. So what would I do? My fridge that I'm using, because I'm using a little fridge that goes under my kitchen table. It's perfect. You carry, you know, it holds everything I want. My my uh, nut-based creamer that certain YouTubers would make fun of. Because yeah, I'm one of those. I'm not. I'm not a glam mad, but yes, I'm a. I'm primarily vegetarian, and in some ways heading toward veganism. You know, so I'm, that's why I do the nut-based. I don't want animal-based too too much, if anything, animal-based. Although I'll eat a hard-boiled egg. And, but see, I feel like I'm not eating the animal. I'm not eating a dead animal. And it, the animal's not required to die in order for to sustain me. Or to, to, to you know, so that's, it, it's, it's just a personal, conscientious decision based on personal beliefs, spiritual beliefs, and then just beliefs in general. I mean, look at, look at everyone around me that eats fast food and white sugar and highly processed foods and genetically modified products. And, you know, every time I go anywhere, that's all they want to talk about is how destroyed the thyroid is and their diabetes and and then and then surgeries they're you know they're having and they're so grossly overweight and they're they're miserable they're miserable and um yes the eating the way i have has kept me out of 
and away from all that mess and it's and you know i guess you know I, i'm not i'm not into that i'm not into this that i yes i'm aging yes i'm aging but becoming diseased you know aging in my opinion and that's another video and i am digressing from the original topic but i will get back on point because i have my notes is aging is not a disease it is not a disease people it is a natural progression from birth to geriatrics, you know, from birth to death. It's there, we're on a journey. And it, this is a natural progression. And things will naturally happen. And then there are some things that are, you know, conspiratorially believed by design that are happening and that's manipulating us. And yes, there, yeah. Let's come on. There are people who profit from our pain and suffering. And yes pharmaceutical industry and some other industries that I won't get into, you know, they profit. So I'm trying to stay away from all that stuff because it gets me in trouble. It gets me in trouble on YouTube and it just does. It just, uh, I may even have to edit this out. But if I don't, it's because I really don't care at this point anymore. I'm just trying to be helpful. So we've already discussed you know, the, the, the structure and water and food so now we're going to get to heat and air conditioning and that's kind of covered in the power thing you know if you're not comfortable in your tiny space if you're not comfortable in any space you're a miserable human being so you have to be able to maintain a comfortable body temperature in order to enjoy existence now i've seen people you know in regular apartments or what have you that don't have a lot of money and they keep their doors and their windows open and they're sitting around all naked with their little spray bottle you know oh you know i'm i'm not one of those you know they're sticking to the leather and they're sweating profusely and it's it's disgusting as they drink their pepsi or their coke or whatever they're nasty i oh getting ugly don't want to go there either i'm just saying Heat and air conditioning. You're going to need it because no matter how you live or where you live, your body, your creature bodily comforts must be addressed. And I have addressed that in other videos, so I don't want to, dig, you know, digress or stay on that too long. And then, of course, the toilet. You're going to have to have a place to poo, to pee and poo. Yes, it's an ugly subject, but it's, it's one we have to cover. And whether you use a water method uh, having to do with some sort of flush toilet, if you have any kind of system that has flush toilets, then you're more than likely going to be tied into a septic system. And that will put you in a, into some form of RV. Because um, black water systems are waste systems. Uh, they might have gray water tied into them, but at the end of the day, they're going to have some pee and some poo mixed in with that mess. And then those have to be dumped. And, and that's hard to do out in the wilderness. And you know, I don't care who you are. I don't want to see anybody dump their RV with three weeks to two months. I don't know how long they go. I don't care how long they go without cleaning those systems. I don't want to see them putting that in nature. That's just nasty. Yes, you can go out in nature, and if you're in a van or an RV, you can take your little shovel, which is another system where if people don't want to have a, a luggable loo or some kind of portable um, toilet system in their rig or in their home, then they'll go out with a shovel and they dig a hole and then they do their business and they cover it up. That's different. That's different because it has to do with volume, okay? We can all go out and dig little holes and do our business like a cat does and cover that stuff up and that's okay. Nature will take care of that. But when you got somebody that's got this 35 to 45 to what have you RV that's got weeks worth of four or five people's BMs and God knows what else is in there. Their medicines, their pharmaceuticals, their cats, their dogs. I don't know. You guys know what I'm saying. I don't want to see that being dumped in a single spot or in any kind of water system or anything. So that's why most of them will go to places where campers and RVers go to dump 
those black water systems into fac you know, facilities that have been created just for that so they can eliminate it however they want to. But yes, you're going to need some sort of toilet system. And I think everybody needs a Luggabaloo. And a Luggabaloo will be a five-gallon industrial bucket <clears throat> with a toilet lid of some sort. And, and people say you can buy those little, what do you call those things? They're, they're the tubular things that are kind of made of polyurethane or foam or something. Some people put them around piping. I don't even remember what they're called now. Pool? Um, pool thing? I, I don't know, people. It, I've, I just had a sudden brain fart, and I, I can't for the life of me think what those are called. Pool noodles. Pool noodle. Take a pool noodle or, or a pipe insulator piece of foam, and you can put that around an industrial bucket, too, and create your own. That's a DIY uh, luggable loo that would be very workable. And then... First, you've got to line them with some sort of, or some form of heavy liners, and then you put that lid on. You put the liners first, and then, then I use something that's called cedar shavings, which is a type of animal bedding for usually rodents, like hamsters and mice and things like that. And it has a really strong odor of cedar, and it's really, really good for masking the odor from urine. Now, I don't mix um, urine and poo together. You do them, try to keep those separate because it's the mixing of the, of the urine and the fecal matter that produces this colossal, you know, everybody's been to uh, an outhouse. And everybody knows that smell. You, oh, <sighs> forgive me. That's just, that, that is, I, I, I need to be treated for PTSD just, just for entertaining the possibility of having to, 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 to use one of those things again. And I did as a child and I've used them a few times in my life. And, uh, and I'm telling you right now, just the odor alone. And I used to be a smoker. I don't smoke anymore. Now I vape, but, uh, vaping doesn't affect your sense of smell like smoking does. So let's just say when I was a smoker, even then. But right now, man, I, I, I'm like a basset hound on steroids when it comes 